Now I've already done a video for the people who, when they boot up, they come up into the Start Menu mode, the new Start Menu. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit today about the Start Screen mode, and that's for the tablet users, or the people that come up in what's called the Full Screen mode of the Start Menu. A lot of the techniques are the same, but there's a couple key differences between the two. So let's take a look. Now you can switch between it manually, which is what we're going to do, or your system may do it automatically if it's a laptop or if it's a convertible that does a laptop and tablet. So let's go over here to the uh, system and we go down to the menu and it says tablet mode. So we'll click over here and you'll see how it says that you can turn on tablet mode here. So we turn it on and the first thing uh, you see is the thing where when you boot up what does it go to? And you have the options here as you can see to choose from. Uh, the other option below it is that when you're doing a laptop that switches, one of the tablet conversion ones, you can have it automatically switch or leave me alone, leave it like it is, or always switch without asking. Oh, yeah. So let's go take a look at what tablet mode looks like. So we'll go down here, click on the Windows icon in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, and you'll see that we'll jump uh, back to the main program, which now we're in tablet mode. We have full screen menu system here. Uh, nothing on the left, but you do have some settings that you can play with. If you go up to the top left hand corner, you'll see the menu button and you'll see that you have the most used uh, programs, the ones you use the most, and the recently installed programs uh, just below that right here. Now then if you go further down, you'll see the uh, file explorer, settings, uh, the power menu is down here as well, and that simply lets you restart and shut down and sleep. Uh, and then below that, we have all apps. Now, if you've never seen a Windows phone before, you you might not be familiar with this interface. It lists all your programs, but if you click on a letter, it will actually collapse it into a listing that shows the letters for only those that have programs starting with that uh, letter. So we jump right to the P's, for example. So now that we're there, we're going to go ahead and grab something to add to the uh, menu system. We're going to go over here and uh, look around for something that we think we want to have listed on the start screen to the right of us. So I've jumped down here and uh, looking around and we find uh, Steam. So if we click on the actual program, we drag it over here. It tries to create new areas for us, but let's go way over here and drop one over there. And by the way, while we're here, we're going to name it the game section. And it's the group. And now we have Steam listed there. Now, let's go out and grab something else, but this time we're going to grab something that's already installed. We're going to go out there and uh, grab, uh, let's say, the store. If we drag it over there, you'll see that it, that symbol that says you can't do it, and it says already pinned. So the system won't let you put a duplicate out there, and you end up with two of them in different places and that. So we can only add an item to the uh, start screen once. Now, if you notice here at the bottom in the task bar, there's no running programs, and I know I have some running. If I click on it, I do see I have them running, but I can't see multiple programs running. Well, if you look here in the settings at the very bottom, it says hide apps uh, on the taskbar. I'd recommend uh, turning that off and just leaving them down there so they'll run so you can see them down here when you on the taskbar without having to click on things. Now that brings me to the discussion of multiple desktops because they, although we can now see all the running programs in the bottom, uh, if we click on the multiple desktop icon, uh, you can't see any any multiple desktops. It doesn't exist in tablet mode. So I'm going to switch back here real quick uh, to settings, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off tablet mode for a second, just for those that haven't seen it before. Uh, let's go turn it off, and let's go back now and click on, uh, we see all the programs, but if we go down to click on tablet mode, you see where we have the, the desktops down here and the add desktops on the right. But in tablet mode, this does not exist. Now what I've done, I've skipped over here to the configuration and turned it uh, back again. And we can see now uh, how everything works and all that. And we're back to the split screen function. We don't have multiple desktops, but we have the same split screen that was in Windows 8. You click on one, you drag the bar to the center, and you can choose whatever program runs on the other side. It's also important to note that 8.1 upgraded this to we have like five screens. But in Windows 10, it's only one split, but you can drag it to any portion of the screen you want to use. 
Now it is important to note that the two menu systems, whether it's full screen or the start menu, they're the same menu system. So any changes you make in placement or icons will reflect when you switch over to the other one. So remember, if you delete it from one, it'll be deleted from the other and vice versa. So there you have it, the start screen versus the start menu in Windows 10. Uh, it's great for tablet modes, uh, great for those uh, touch-enabled applications. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Come on back for Windows 8 and Windows 10, and Windows Phone 8 and Windows 10, and general how-to videos, all here to help you make the most out of your system.